Let's explore some more LED signage modules, and this time it's cob-based LED modules. So these are basically strings of modules that are used inside signage, either inside the sort of block channel letters or inside the boxes to illuminate from behind. Sometimes they rather nauseatingly use them around shop windows as well, just as bright points of light. They can be quite ferocious that way. The difference between this type and the others, well, let me show you some others. Let, let me show you some really crap ones. These are just awful. Uh, these are the very generic eBay cheapy ones with very badly matched LEDs, slightly defective LEDs, and the common strip in the back, and you presumably just cut them apart when you need them. Uh, very thin wire, uh, very horrible modules. These are better, I think. The other ones I could show you are the modules like this. This is a more common sort of style, where there's individuals of LEDs in different sections behind lenses. But the theory is the same. You basically, you cut it to the desired length. Each one is approximately two watt. It just gives you a nice source of light. These ones, it's notable that instead of the separate uh, adhesive tape in the back, you do have to cut it apart uh, as needed. I suppose it keeps them all clustered together. So I shall show you these lit up. And the reason I got blue ones, because that's what the blue represents here, the blue plastic colour, is because it means that the uh, the LED chips are just bare. There's no phosphor over them. If this, these were white LED cob modules, it would have the yellow phosphor. If they were the red ones, it would have the red phosphor and so on. But by getting the blue ones, it's just bare modules and we can explore them closer. Well, now you've seen them lit, I'll turn that off. I'll get this out of the way. I shall zoom down a bit and we'll take a look at this one. So the cob module, zoom down, the cob module is moulded round and you can actually see on one of those other modules, let me just grab them back in again then, that was bad timing. On one of those other cob modules you can see the plastic has moulded over the top but it's not stuck onto the silicony schmoo so that's something that you can just pick off, it's not that bad. But these uh, modules are start off as the aluminium PCBs with the wires on them with the little dam and the resin f for the little chips, and it is using cob chips, chip on board, flip chips. The, um, are the tiny little chips that are bonded directly to the PCB. We'll take a closer look at that afterwards. But in the meantime, before we go there, uh, I'm going to try and delaminate this one. So I'm going to cut the wires here and crop those down there, and I'm going to see how easy it peels off. It might be well bonded on, but to be honest, I don't think the plastic is going to go super onto the, the aluminium. It's not bad, it's not bad. It's being held on to a degree by the wires here, but it's not super bonded on. Although the plastic is moulded round the resistors and things like that, it means that uh, I wonder if over time with expansion contraction, water would end up seeping in and do things like corroding these connections in here. I suppose there's only one way to find out. Well, ask signage guys. That's the way to find out. Right, tell you what, I'm going to take a closer look at this. I'm going to take a picture of it and then we can explore it in greater detail. One moment, please. And continue with a nice high resolution picture. Let's take a look at this. So the area under the gel here, the, you've got the white dam that is poured round. The chips are physically soldered on. These are just bare LEDs. They're very thin LEDs that are placed onto pads with the uh, a little blob of the solder paste. And then it's, they, they're just treated like the surface mount components. They're just flowed on. But in this case, they are microscopic. I really don't know how they place these because they are absolutely excruciatingly small. But they're the, basically the bare LED chips with metallization formed on them so they can just be sorted in place without actually having to have a package around them. So we've got three in parallel, then three, and then three. So effectively it's nine LEDs, but they're as a three by three parallel series array. And in series with that are two 8.2 ohm resistors. That will add up to 16.4 ohms. Uh, the Current, the power drawn by these at 12 volts is about 170 milliamps, which is 2 watts. If we just validated that by saying uh, I equals V over R, so that's the voltage dropped across the resistors, which it's going to be 9 volts being dropped across these roughly from the 12, 3 volts left to drop across the two resistors, divided by 16.4 gives us roughly... 180 milliamps. So that means the voltage across these LEDs for the 170 milliamps is just a little bit higher than 3 volts. I could have worked out the exact voltage across them. 
but that's slightly pointless. So there's an oddity about this. Over here, they've got the number of the module, and they've done that thing that they have uh, left off some of the uh, solda resist, and they've done that over here, and it's kind of tinned the pads, and it's uh, given this a silver look. There, they've left the resist off, but it's just going through to the printed circuit board material, which is a, a layer of fiberglass on the aluminium. But in doing so, they, they could have moved this logo onto here, but they've actually compromised. They've reduced this volume of copper here down to this area here just for their logo. That's very odd because they could have just moved that logo uh, down a bit and then just run that track right across and it would have increased the current carrying capacity because this is part of the bus bar that passes right through the whole system. So uh, that is the narrowest bit and it's purely because of that logo. That's very strange. Uh, I guess these two things are test points, maybe not. I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe for testing during manufacture. I see other little dots around here. But they've uh, gone for the maximum amount of copper covering the area. There's very little uh, copper left uh, removed. So uh, this array of LEDs here then couples down to the next ones by this solid mass. And this is going to help couple the heat into the background, into the metal plate. But that's more or less it. There's not really much to say about them. It is just basically... Um, Two resistors in series with a 3x3 three three array of the LED chips. Um, but that's interesting. It'll be interesting to see. I may inquire on suitable forums and see who's had LED modules fail in a sort of widespread manner and what styles they were. Uh, these are fairly generic eBay ones. I'm not sure what the quality is. I think really if you're considering putting this stuff in signage, you have to potentially buy from companies that buy it in and test it and they've got predictable quantities because they buy large quantities because because if you uh, if you spend a lot of time putting modules like these into signage and it turns out they don't last too long then it means you have to do all the work again under warranty and also get all the access equipment for going out to the signage but they have other uses uh, an interesting thing I discovered recently is that the uh, white modules grabs white modules are used in some television sets now behind the behind the LCD screens, uh, and likewise, suppose really because these are designed, they just zig them, zag them backwards and forwards in large quantities because they're designed for illuminating signage quite brightly. I suppose it makes sense to use them as retrofits for uh, TV screens, for backlighting LCD panels. But that is it. That is what's inside the Cobb-based LED modules. They're quite smart. Um, maybe I'll put some in test on a long-term basis and just see if they fail over time. But it was certainly worth exploring and quite an interesting construction. Although with that delaminating thing, I don't think that uh, I don't think I'd trust these for use in a very wet environment. But in signage, they may well be okay.